Hey guys. So today I am working on getting ready for Bill. I thought I was ready, but then I had a whole bunch of ideas that I wanted to uh, get his help with. Well, the tractor's help with. I'm not going to have him out here lifting logs, but he can definitely have the tractor ready so I can put logs in the thing and he can put them where they're supposed to go. So like I mentioned in the last video, this area has to be cleaned out so we can put a fence. Not a chain link fence, but a wooden fence. Oh yeah, look who I've got over here. Look at that acacia tree, by the way. So Daisy's out here grazing. All this over here was tall with seed heads on it and she wouldn't eat it. And so I thought I would do an experiment and I would just cut the uh, the tops, the seed heads off with the weed eater. So I did this whole area with the, the weed eater just cutting the top, you know, four to six inches off. Let her out here this morning and now she's eating it. So I have an orange tree planted here in a gopher basket. And it was on the other side of the fence here, so it hadn't been well taken care of. And then when Bill started moving dirt, it kind of got dirt pushed up against it. But anyway, it's in the wrong place, so I need to move it. I'm probably just going to pot it for now and then just get started clearing this area. Full stop. Can't believe I live in your thoughts. I think about you all the time, morning, evening, and midnight. Such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden Shows if I'm honest, you're the leaves in mid August, and I've come out here to say that I love you. Ooh, ooh, you, ooh, ooh. So had to take a little break from this. This is a lot of energy right here. It takes a ton of effort. And so I stopped for a little bit and I'm trying to envision how this path is gonna move from the vegetable garden and into the orchard slash Mediterranean rock garden, gravel garden actually. So, okay, so you've got the stairs going down and I hammered these posts in on a curve to show Bill where to cut, because Bill's gonna cut down and drag it out this way, all the dirt, so this is all level more or less instead of the slant that it is now. So I'm having to look at this curve from all angles and make sure that there's still enough space between the, the cut and the fence, because we're gonna want honeysuckle or something along this fence to cover it up. And I'm gonna want a fairly wide bed next to it and then there'll be a path, and then there'll be some sort of retaining wall going around. And then all up here will be the orchard. In aiming for more self-sufficiency, I have temporarily cut the Japanese garden out of the plan. Now eventually it might go somewhere up at the top, or when we get some new property, 
it might go there because I definitely want it. I mean, I've wanted one of those forever. But right now, I think focusing on fruit and food production as well as grazing area under the fruit trees, to me, for self-sufficiency, that makes more sense at the moment. It's the next day, kind of cold and windy. So before I put Daisy out to graze, I gotta figure out where I'm gonna do that today. I had her over there yesterday. Um, the problem is our neighbor down below, they have a elderly dog who has some joint problems. And when she sees Daisy, she kind of goes a little crazy and um, could hurt herself. So what we're gonna do is on this fence, we're going to put that privacy screening like we had, I took off behind the, um, good morning. I took it off behind the cottage, remember? So I have that left, it's black. Emily found some brown or some mocha colored ones on Amazon. So she's going to uh, get those, those should be here tomorrow and then we can put that up and then Daisy can go back to grazing over there. So I'm assuming over in the pasture, there's probably plenty of green grass grown back. Look at the ranunculus bed. A lot of color showing. Got a couple of blooms fully bloomed out. However, what I learned is they need to be planted a lot closer together than what it said on the uh, package. So lesson learned for next year. Yeah, up in here, we've got good growth. Some of it's got seed heads, so she may skip that, but there's enough for today. Morning, Daisy. Good morning. Is that saying keep out? <laughs> Hi, baby. Good morning. I do this every time I get her excited, then realize I have to go get the lead. It's tied up over in the other side of the property. All right, she's going to hang out here for a while. I'll come back and check on her and see if she's cleared the area. Then we can move her up the fence a little bit more. You good? You good here? I'm gonna get the chickens fed, head inside for my workout, then go back over to where I was yesterday and finish getting ready for Bell. Quick update here on the tulip pots. Filling in nicely. We've got lots of buds. Speaking of buds, look at this red bud tree. How vibrant. I love this coloring with the blue of the door and the color of the roof. And this red bud tree over here, it's a different variety, so it's obviously later. You can see the buds just starting to appear. You taking a look at them? Yeah, yeah, you don't care too much, do you? All right, all done with that. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I will not. Today's Thursday. So maybe yesterday was really a lot of work and I'm almost done. In fact, if Bill came right now, it would be completely fine. So what I did yesterday, I got all the chopped wood out of here. I got the chain link fence down and then I put a lot of the wood down here. It's not good firewood because it's practically, it's just rotten and wet and it wouldn't be good. So I put this here to kind of help build this berm out a little bit. And yes, I know as the years pass, it will sink a little bit and that's totally fine. I think the only decision I have to make before, oh, well, wait a minute. So I forgot about this. <clears throat> this is a eucalyptus stump that's been cut and it's, it's, it's had a bunch of new growth that I've then cut again. You can see right there. I don't have a grinder to grind stumps out and uh, I don't really want to get someone here to do that. So I'm thinking if I cut all these branches off, the level of the stump is down here. And then I ran a piece of wood across uh, to the level of the path. So if Bill came in here with dirt, filled it in to make it level, that stump would be about three inches under. 
maybe even more, maybe six. And that's not the first time I've done that way. In fact, there's a couple under paths here in the vegetable garden and they never grew back. Once they were covered with dirt, they never grew back. No leaves pushed out of the ground. So uh, I think that's what I'll do. I'll get the chainsaw and just cut off those branches and have him just cover right over it. These big daddies on the other hand, especially these, I cannot move by myself. So I'm gonna need a tractor for help. But then that begs the question, where are we gonna put them? I have no clue. Um, I did think that we could dig this out here, move these out, dig this out with the, sh the tractor, and then put the logs back and cover them. But that would definitely, I mean, that's here. I mean, over there, that's, that berm, it doesn't matter if it sinks a little bit. But here, this is going to be actual ground path walking area. So, do I really just want to push off a problem for later? I don't know. So, I think I'm going to take today off, do all, everything I just mentioned tomorrow tomorrow's friday so then saturday bill will be here but i've got a lot to do today that's been i've been putting off and i'm late i've got to start my seeds all right i'm gonna to have to go back and watch where i just was because i just got a visitor at the gate um a woman got out of her car and she's like excuse me of course i thought oh no a stalker but actually it was the couple that owned this house back in 2006. The funny thing is I already knew who they were because one of Noah's friends, when he came over here one time, he said, my grandparents used to live in this house. Small world, right? That was the grandparents. So anyway, let me go back and watch where I was and then we'll continue. Oh yeah, I was talking about what I was going to be doing rather than working down there today. So I'm very late to getting my second batch of seeds started, flowers and vegetables. And then I'm also late with my sweet potatoes, getting them started to get slips. I've still got some sweet potatoes left from last year's crop. So I'll use those. This is Beauregard as the variety. And then a friend of mine brought me some purple ones. I had talked to him about having those in Hawaii and they were so delicious. They're purple on the outside and on the inside. Um, and he found them and he was going to grow them for himself. So he got me some too. How's it going? How does your halter feel? Straight from the cow's mouth. All right. So I'm going to be just starting these sweet potatoes in milk cartons, half milk cartons. And I'm just going to be using some regular potting soil. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. And by the way, I've had so many, every time I do a video out here, I get a question on what this is. These are actually Norfolk pines. It was just a Christmas decoration. I don't know if I got it at Trader Joe's or whatever. Um, but everyone always asks. And I'm debating whether or not to plant them outside. They don't really have the look that I like. They're not really even a pine tree. I mean, I guess they are, but... I don't know. They don't look like pine trees. But they grow really, really, really big, and I don't know if I want to deal with that. All right, so I've just got some potting soil in each one, and I'll take the potato and just kind of nestle it down in there. This is the best way. I did an experiment on the Next Level Gardening. I did it in water, I did it in perlite, or I did it in potting soil. And, uh, the perlite and the potting soil did the best, much better than the water. But the potting soil was great because the roots from the, it grew slips, but then roots also started to take root from the slips. So I, would, I was able to pop the slips off and they were ready to go. I didn't have to take that extra step of putting the slips in water and allowing them to root. I wanted to address something, I think in the, one, the video about kind of homesteading where you are and whatever size property you have or balcony you have. I think um, a lot of people have said, you know, you're doing just fine. You can grow a ton of produce in an acre and a half, which is what I have. And that's true. If I was a vegetarian or a vegan, I could completely be self-sufficient on the property we have. But... I'm not 
a vegan or a vegetarian, uh, nor do I want to be. I've tried the whole vegetarian thing, and so in order, but in order to have, but in order to have animals, um, I mean, just take Daisy. You know, she's a miniature breed, and so the half acre pasture is fine for her. Um, but when she has a calf. You know, if that calf is a female, depending on how much milk Daisy produces, we might need two cows uh, for dairy. Now we could get away with that. We could have two Dexter cows on that same pasture, that's fine. If Daisy has a, a bull, bull calf, then that bull calf would either be raised up for meat. It couldn't be, we couldn't have it here for breeding purposes because he's related to the one he'd be breeding. So we would either have to use him for meat or sell him. And if you sold him, he'd be used for meat most likely anyway. So, but anyway, beef cattle, they don't take up as much room. I mean, you can have them in a fairly small pen, but we still want grass fed. So they'd have to be hay fed. And then that gets into the whole issue of, you know, if you're being self-sufficient and you're having dairy cows or, or beef, if you're being self-sufficient, then you need to supply all the grass or all the hay. And right now, I mean, we might be able to supply all the grass. I don't know. Between the, the main pasture and then over where I was going to put the Japanese garden where I'm working right now, you know, that might be enough grass if we can get a well and if we can keep it watered. But only for one cow. Daisy, that, that's, we've maxed out there. And then the sheep as well. When we're thinking long-term self-sufficiency, we need either more acreage for grazing land, for a hay field, for alfalfa. So when I'm talking about you know, wanting more land, it's not necessarily for more gardens. Well, it's not for more gardens. It's for infrastructure and support of livestock. So right now that's not possible. So that's in my mind, the need for more land. And, um, you know, there's places up and down this road here that wouldn't have to be far away. I mean, there's lots of land, not necessarily available for sale right now, but, um, you know, we're not really ready to buy right now either. There's a few acres right across the street. I mean, they're not for sale, but maybe someday, you know, you never know. Um, maybe even buying a piece of that land. Another option would be to lease land, which we've thought of, but long term, you know, if anything major happens and we need that land and all of a sudden we are no longer, we're not owners of the land and we're kicked off the land, um, that would throw everything into a tailspin. So right now we are making do with what we have. We're making the most of what we have. We're gonna show you how to homestead on a smaller property. Why do I feel like I'm getting a sore throat? All right, so we've got two Beauregard sweet potatoes. This is a Japanese sweet potato. This is a purple sweet potato. So I'm gonna run outside and get the seed starting mix. I'm running out, I had to order some more, but it's not here yet. Pre-moisten it and fill as many of these as I can. So we have some goals this year that are different from last year. I am never going to operate out of fear. Um, I'm not going to be a fear monger to get video views or subscribers. However, I do think that it is smart in this day and age with the way the world is going. Um, I think it's best wherever you are to be a little more self-sufficient. and. I was under the impression that in order to be self-sufficient, you had to have a large piece of property and you had to have gardens and um, animals. And, and that is true for long-term self-sufficiency. But, you know, if we're talking three months, six months, a year, there are ways you can be self-sufficient living in an apartment but it does take some, some planning ahead. My grandparents, <clears throat> they had a big garden and they preserved uh, and canned everything from that garden. And so that's kind of always been my thought process is if I didn't have a big garden, I wouldn't have much to preserve, to can 
or whatever way we would preserve it. Uh, so in our last house, I mean, we froze tomatoes and, you know, things that we had a, a huge amount of. But we had a small garden, and so it wasn't even something we thought about. And then we moved here, and we have a much bigger garden. And last year, we freeze-dried, we froze, uh, water bath canned, but really just dabbling in it. Um, but now... I have a much more, much bigger sense of urgency. I'm not out of fear, but I want to be prepared. And so this year we are really focused on um, preserving not just what our garden produces. Because while we have a bigger garden at this point, it's not big enough to feed us for an entire year. Like if that's all we had to eat, it's not big enough for that. It, it won't produce that amount. And all of a sudden, it hit me that we don't have to produce what we preserve and neither do you. And that is a huge blessing, especially for someone who lives in an apartment but wants to be prepared as much as possible. If you go to the grocery store and buy food or the farmer's market preferably, buy food in season, preferably from local farmers, and you invest in a canner, dehydrator, you can put away enough food to last you however long you wanna last. So this year, not only will we uh, be preserving what we grow and growing more, we're also going to be uh, going to farmer's markets, things that we don't grow, we're gonna be putting away meat, by canning it. We just now invested in a pressure canner. We invested in a dehydrator. And so we're gonna be showing a lot of that on this channel this year, is preserving in all different forms. And not only what we grow ourselves, but what we get elsewhere. I wanted, I didn't want to put the subject of like prepping. I don't like the word prepping. I. It's been hijacked, I think, by channels that just want to scare you. I've gone into some prepping channels just to kind of see what it was all about, and I can't even watch them. I mean, every video on these channels is like, I talked to this person and the world is gonna end in five days. I don't want to live that way, and I don't want to uh, try and grow my channel through fear. And I have put off talking about prepping in whatever way I view that, because I didn't want, I know a lot of people watch my channel who don't have any land, who are you know older or just don't have the ability to uh, do what it takes to grow and produce food to be able to have you prepared for you know the worst. And I didn't want people to see me preparing and thinking like, oh man, I'm not gonna be able to make it because I don't have what Brian has. I don't have the space. I don't have a milk cow. I don't have chickens. Um, although I will say right now, if you are allowed to have chickens, you need to get chickens. I mean, worst came to worst. We have 3,000 eggs or so coming in every year. Uh, I hadn't want to put that on the channel because I didn't want to scare people who couldn't do what I'm doing. But I feel like if you can invest in a canner and what you need for that kind of thing, um, it doesn't matter what size property you have, you can be prepared for anything. And you don't have to have a big fancy pantry. I know there's lots of YouTubers who have these expansive pantries, they open up the doors, or they're the full basement and they've got all these jars full of canned goods to last them for however long, which is really fun to look at. And we have a decent sized pantry, but um, not enough to store food for that long. Our garage gets too hot in the summer to uh, store canned goods out there. And so I don't remember who I was watching, but they have them under their bed. All the beds have boxes full of all of their canned goods. So that's what we're gonna do. Every nook and cranny that you can hide these in, go ahead and do it. So now I'm super excited to move forward uh, as a positive prepper, if that's, if there's something about that, I don't want to be one of those channels that scares you into doing things or just scares you into something for clicks. And so now I've found preserving to be the great equalizer. So 
so that I can talk about things, prep, you know, preparing, being, being well prepared, food wise. I can talk about those kind of things and not feel like I'm scaring somebody. Because after watching me, if you feel that you need to prepare, it doesn't matter where you live, what what you or how much property you have, you can do it. And if you just like watching me and you don't feel there's a need for it, then I'm serving you as well. Did that make sense at all? I hope so. Because I did tell you a couple videos back, and it resonated with a lot of you, that we were going to make the most of what we have, the space we have, until, you know, maybe in the future we can get some more. And those of you who are in a similar situation, no matter how much space you have, going forward, we're all going to be able to make the most of our space. And that might mean different things for you than it does for me, but we can all work together toward that. Well, I got a lot done today. Me too. Yeah, you did too. You want to tell them what you're doing? Is this coming out? When does this come out? He doesn't after? watch our videos. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, well, Noah is away. I just... <laughs> Apparently, he doesn't want to hear what I have to say. All right. While Noah is gone, I decided to completely redo his room. He's been asking to redo his room, doesn't know what he wants, but just knows he wants a bigger bed. And I can't stand that it's always messy, so I decided to completely... We don't have a car camera holder. I'm trying to... Oh! <laughs> I'm trying to wedge it between the dash and the window. We need to get one of those things that... So I am completely redoing his room and cannot wait for him to come home tomorrow and really hoping that he likes it. But tonight, since it's our last night without a child, mm -hmm. um, we are headed to Oceanside to go to our favorite steakhouse, yes. uh, Road, Texas Roadhouse. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that. Hope there's not a lot of traffic. <laughs> <laughs>